could really didn't talk on the phone much. You know, it was very, hey, meet me at the restaurant. <laughs> Meet me, at the, meet me at the Two Sisters restaurant, you know, mm -hmm. meet me over here, meet me at M&M's, you know, that was basically the, the conversation that we would have. Uh, the thing about mine is that my informant, who was my partner, was wired, so mm. it didn't matter, you know, he decoded the whole conversation in court. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. You know, when I went to prison, my ulcers was messed up. You know, I used to walk around with a bottle of that Maylock. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I drink it like water. Wow. Did you <clears throat> did you go through times of paranoia? Like a lot. I dealt with paranoia. Like I was paranoid. I thought everybody and from everybody that talked to me. That's what I'm paranoid saying. Paranoid from the police. Yeah, I thought everybody was working with them. Yeah, because you don't know who might be undercover. You don't know Getting who might be a rat. All that talking on the phone. One phone would. Two, three weeks and change the numbers and all kind of stuff. Did you always talk in code to everybody or only to certain people? Like it became a habit when you said certain things. Well, we really didn't talk on the phone much. You know, it was very, hey, meet me at the restaurant. <laughs> Meet me, at the, meet me at the Two Sisters restaurant, you know, mm -hmm. meet me over here, meet me at M&M's, you know, that was basically the, the conversation that we would have. Uh, the thing about mine is that my informant, who was my partner, was wired, so mm. it didn't matter, you know, he decoded the whole conversation in court. Yeah, I, I remember a time when it was a drought and I went to Houston and I, I can remember a guy took me to the wrong spot. I told him, meet me at the Super One, but when he met me, he met me and then he took me around this corner. And in my mind, I was already angry because it had been a drought and it had nothing been moving in so long, I was totally ticked off with this guy to where it, came, it became violent soon as we even got out the car because I felt like he betrayed me. And I felt like he was trying to do me because I didn't really know him. Right. These are the things that happen when you're trying to deal with droughts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Did you ever have like a that. drought? I had droughts, but my droughts was never to where I was really going. I, no, I did. I did. <laughs> I did deal with people that I didn't, didn't know. know. But the person that I was doing the deal with was supposed to know the person. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, uh, this, but, but you know, this is such a but, trust like it's hard to trust people. You can't trust people in that but game. But it's, it's it goes the same way throughout. You know, through life, through life, with all these businesses, whatever you in. I mean, it's hard to trust people. You know. But the difference is when you're in a legitimate business, and yes, it's hard to trust people. But you're not gonna go to prison behind somebody else if it's a legal business compared to when it's illegal and you don't trust somebody. They can send you to but, prison for life. But they worse. They you, worse. You might have to kill these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember Dame Dash saying something about it when he he was owed some money by a, a corporate American. It was so the way they treat you is even worse because they can't do they can't even handle the situation that they're creating. Right. I agree with that because mm -hmm. you know they, they they do it behind you know paperwork computers and you have to face off with people who they're weaker than you. But they just know how to play the game. Yeah, and they take more chances. They you take know. chances. You know, they, they, they they gonna tell you kill me. Mm -hmm. You know, in the street they ain't gonna say that because they know you might do you it. Might. <laughs> <laughs>